Good morning and welcome to worship on this 12th Sunday after Pentecost. Let's gather together this morning with a gospel song, Come and Go With Me to My Father's House. I am playing and we are leading worship together in the sanctuary at Redeemer, a place that we often call our Father's House. And wherever you are this morning, you are in your Father's house. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Where could we go that is not our Father's house? If you're watching on YouTube, as every week, I invite you to turn on the captions and you can follow along with the text and the words of our worship. If not, just listen to me sing each first line and then join in. I encourage you to snap, to tap, to clap, to dance, and to smile as you come and go with me to my father's house where there's joy Forgive us, Lord. For self-centered living and for failing to walk with humility and gentleness, forgive us, Lord. Forgive, forgive us, us, Lord. For misuse of human relationships and for unwillingness to see the image of God in others, Forgive us, Lord. Forgive, Forgive us, us, Lord. For jealousies that defied families and nations, and for rivalries that create strife and warfare. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive, Forgive us, Lord. For reluctance in sharing the gifts of God, and for carelessness with the fruits of creation. Forgive us, Lord. 
Forgive us, Lord. We follow our Savior in lives of justice by trusting, and we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us while we were still sinners, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. Amen. We have been forgiven. What a joy. Let us dance and sing now in our Father's house. You're welcome to stand if you want. Let us dance and sing now in our Father's house. In our Father's house. In our Father's house. Let us dance and sing now in our Father's house. to love the world with compassion and constancy that your name may be known throughout the earth through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord amen the peace of the Lord be with you always and also also with you. You. thank you it's good to be with you this morning take a moment as we do every week at this time and Place the sign of the cross on your forehead, reminding us of who we are and whose we are, children of God, that we are loved, and that God's peace extends in us and to us and through us to others. And then, you know, take a moment if you're by yourself or even if you're together with your family or where you're at, please just give yourself a big hug and feel that that love and that strength that God provides. Amen. Amen. A reading from the 12th chapter of Romans. Sisters and brothers, I beg you through the mercy of God to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, This is your spiritual act of worship. Don't conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds so that you can judge what God's will is, what is good, pleasing, and perfect. In light of the grace we have from God, I urge each of you not to exaggerate your own importance. Each of you must judge yourself soberly by the standard of trust God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members don't have the same function, so all of us, in union with Christ, form one body. And as members of that one body, we belong to each other. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. With the author of Psalm 138 this morning, we proclaim together, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with my whole heart. 
word about the way that we sing the psalms this morning. We keep repeating this phrase, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with my whole heart. Sometimes I will sing that phrase with you, and you're welcome to sing it with me, or to hum it. Sometimes I will be proclaiming the text of the psalm. I may be doing that while you're singing those words or humming that phrase. Wherever the Spirit leads you, as we worship together, to listen to the words I proclaim, or to sing that phrase, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with my whole heart. I invite each of us to follow the Spirit, to rest where the Spirit leads us, beside the still waters. Listen and sing. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with my whole heart. I will give thanks before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with my whole heart. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with my whole heart. Because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. your name and glorified your word above all things. I will be thanks to you, Lord, with my whole heart. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord. of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with my whole heart. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with my whole heart. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with my whole heart. Perceiving the haughty from afar. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with my whole heart. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with my whole heart. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with my whole heart. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me.
Gospel according to Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus came to the neighborhood of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples this question. What do people say about who the Chosen One is? And they replied, Some say John the Baptizer, others say Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And you, he said, who do you say that I am? You are the Messiah, Simon Peter answered, the firstborn of the living God. And Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon ben Jonah. No mere mortal has revealed this to you, but my Abba God in heaven. I also tell you this, your name now is Rock. And on bedrock like this I will build my community, and the jaws of death will not prevail against it. Here, I'll give you the keys to the reign of heaven. Whatever you declare bound on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you declare loosed on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then Jesus strictly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Grace and peace to you this day from God, our Creator, and our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This morning, I, I want to just touch on our Gospel and then turn our focus today on the Romans passage. We'll look at Matthew, this text, and the next one more in depth next week. But just to set the stage a little bit, for next week, a very brief history moment on this place called Caesarea Philippi. It was north of the Sea of Galilee. It was the location of the Cave of Pan, the place of the pagan Gate of Hades. Now, if you Google Cave of Pan, you know, you will see a mountain covered with little carved out spaces where all the Statues of the Roman gods live, small g gods. And this is our backdrop for our gospel today, and you can just imagine it. Jesus and his disciples are walking by this place. They see all the monuments. And it, isn't it interesting that he asks them, who do people say that I am? And then that bigger question. But who do you say that I am? And Peter gives us his famous response. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus says, yes, Peter, you are the rock. On you I will build my church, my community. And then what? I just want to say this much more about this. It's clearly important to give Peter his moment in the sun, okay? because next week the rock will crumble. <laughs> Peter will go on to completely misunderstand what it means for Jesus to be the Messiah. And he will later resist Jesus' intention to turn himself over to the authorities and that he will eventually deny and desert his Lord. But for now, in this moment, he confesses that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And that's something for which we are to give thanks. And I said more on this next week. So let's look at the Romans passage. We heard in Paul's letter to the Romans, this is chapter 12, beginning at the first verse. Paul is making an appeal to them actually more than just an appeal or a request. It's more like a summons, a command to embrace all human life as one community. 
and to offer themselves fully, bodily, completely, sacrificially in their spiritual worship and in their daily lives. And he warns them, don't let the world influence or dictate what this means, but encourages them to be transformed. Be renewed, he says, in mind, body, and spirit each and every day. Because this is God's will, good, pleasing, and perfect. To use all of their God-given gifts for the sake of all. And he said, just as each of us has, has one body with many members, and these members don't have the same function, so all of us, in union with Christ, form one body. And as members of that one body, we, we belong to each other. This is really important. It was important for them, and it's important for us, for all of us. You know, truly, there's so much going on in the world right now around us that needs our effort and work and passions and commitment. We are being called in our individual lives and our, and our communal lives to confess Christ, the suffering Christ who sided always with the vulnerable in both word and deed. At one and the same time, we know that there is much more to do than we seem able to do. And that even our best efforts and most heartfelt attempts will sometimes fall short. Not living maybe as deeply or truly into our confessions as we could, given the circumstances that we're in. But we're working on it, right? We're working on it. Which brings me to another reason I chose to focus on Romans today. It's that phrase, so all of us in union with Christ form one body. And as members of that one body, we belong to each other. As you know, we met for the first time last Sunday in the sanctuary for worship. It had been a long time. It was a small group, yes, but it was a good feeling. A good start. And just for the record, please know we will continue to be online each and every week as well. There's been a lot of discernment necessary. Lots of things to consider. So the next thing that comes up, please know as we continue to do this, will be the question of Sharing Holy Communion seems to be the next step. And like I said, we've had a lot of discernment about this, lots of things to consider, like safely distributing the elements in a good non-contact way. I think we have that figured out for now. I'll tell you more about that in just a moment. But the other consideration more, and more importantly for me, was how could we do this and involve everyone we can as one body, one community? The Apostle Paul spoke to the Corinthians about this in his first letter, the 11th chapter. He wasn't happy with them when they didn't meet together. They had held separate gatherings. Not everyone was included. That they were not discerning the whole body of Christ. And he said in verse 33, So then, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. 
You know, when we couldn't meet in the sanctuary, we were all apart. And these words haunted me. But now that we're coming together in the sanctuary, I believe we can move forward again together as one body, the body of Christ. So, when we come to that time in the service, whether you're here or at home, we can all partake. Is it a perfect plan? Maybe not. But like last Sunday was a good start, I think this will be too. So starting next Sunday, we will bless and receive the sacrament. Not only for those that are attending in the sanctuary, but also those of you who are at home. So here's the plan for now, okay? For the sanctuary gather, we'll place the wafers in small paper cups and use our cup trays that we haven't had out for a while, you know, and the little plastic cups for the wine and the juice. There will be no hands on contact. And while that is happening in the sanctuary, for those of you at home, now, okay, I need you to do something as you prepare for next Sunday. Prepare ahead a time of maybe a bit of bread, maybe a little wine or juice, and just have it ready so that when we are partaking here in the sanctuary, you at home can as well. Now, I'm just going to also say that, that both elements are not required to make it, big word, efficacious. <laughs> so together, we will take and eat the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The Danish theologian Soren Kierkegaard once said about spirituality, to be a saint is to will one thing. In order to will one thing, one must become totally a dedicated being. And I think this is the essence of Paul's words to the Romans today. It is at the heart of Jesus' questions to his disciples, who do you say that I am? Here in this place where Paul focuses most intently on the physical body and what we are to do with it and make of it, present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. And when you distill this message down, it, it can be one word, dedication. Paul is calling Jesus' followers to rethink their lives, to be dedicated beings, for all to be lifted up as an offering to God, as one. Amen. Let's join together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together in the Spirit's embrace, let us pray for the mending of God's world. We respond to each prayer petition by singing, Jesus, heal us, Jesus. Jesus, heal us now. Jesus. 
heartfelt thanks for the gifts of all who have died and now rest in you, especially those we name now in our hearts. Continue to build your church upon their strong and enduring foundation. it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So good to be with you. Just a few announcements before we hear our sending song and, and benediction for this day. Um, just remember some of the things that I mentioned in the sermon, particularly uh, for those at home, that when we come to that moment in the service for the Eucharist, prepare ahead of time a little bread, maybe a little wine or juice. So have that ready to go when, so we can share this all together next week. We're working on getting the Christian Service Center back open. Hopefully it'll be this week. Things are going well. And I want to just always give thanks to uh, Trudy and our food pantry gang and for all of you who continue to bring goods and food to the pantry and, and uh, also too for your continued support of the church and, and our work here. Preschool is doing fine. Many people have asked and thanks as always to them. And then, you know, uh, these storms that, uh, as they have formed and are coming by, just keep all those in the, that are either have been or will be in the path of these storms in your prayers. And please, please be safe, everyone, as best you can. I think that's all the announcements for this day and for this week. So I invite David now to... Send us out with music. We gathered today with the gathering song, Come and go with me to my Father's house. And wherever you are, you are in your Father's house. We leave and we are sent today with that same song. The word's a little different. We're going to sing together, Let us live in love now in our Father's house. And where is our Father's house? Well, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. This is my Father's world, and this whole world is our Father's house. Let us live in love now in our Father's house, where there's joy, joy, joy. house, in our Father's house, let us live in love now, in our Father's house, in our Father's house, let us live in love now, in our Father's house, in our Father's house, let us live in love now, in our Father's house, in our Father's house, let us live in love now, in our Father's house, in our Father's house, let us live in love now,
let us live in love now in our Father's house where there's joy, joy, joy. Let us live as healers. Let us live as healers in our Father's house. In our Father's house. In our Father's house. Let us live as healers in our Father's house. Let us live as brothers in our Father's house. In our Father's house. In our Father's house. Let us live as brothers in our Father's house. Where there's joy, joy, joy. Let us live as sisters. Let us live as sisters in our Father's house. In our Father's house. Father's house. Let us live as sisters in our Father's house, where there's joy, joy, joy. How are we going to do that? Jesus is the way now. Jesus is the way now in our Father's house. In our Father's house. In our Father's house. Jesus is the way now in our Father's house, where there's joy. to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord, and we say thanks Praise be, be God. God. See you soon.